ask the question and, and see if it's happened. Well, it's two questions on blood. It's Enjoy Life Forever, Chapter 39, God's View of Blood. And page 165 has a picture of a test tube where blood has been spun, so it's uh, divided into its constituent parts. Red blood cells at the bottom because they're the heaviest, plasma at the top because it's the lightest, and then in between, white blood cells and platelets. Um, I know that since the 1980s, uh, I did do a study on this, there have been numerous changes on fractions of blood you're allowed to have every fraction of blood since various times in the 1980s so my question is it says it on page 165 that christians to decide meaning that jehovah's witnesses can now have fractions from plasma fractions from white blood cells fractions from platelets fractions from red blood cells which basically means you're you're splitting blood up into its four constituent parts and you're allowed to have that why is a whole blood transfusion banned but if you split blood into its four constituent parts jehovah's witnesses are allowed to have each of the four constituent parts it would be like saying the bible forbids you from eating cake cake is made out of four things water yeast flour actually it's five things sugar and flour now christians can eat each of those five things individually you can drink water you can eat yeast, flour, sugar, uh, and um, the other thing that's a part of cake. But you're not allowed to have mix all those five things together and eat them as cake. That's kind of inconsistent. If Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to have whole blood transfusions, why are you allowed to split blood into its four constituent parts? And then you can take each of those four constituent parts. It, it, to, to me, that doesn't seem consistent, sir. Okay, yeah, and to be honest, it, it's what we call a, a conscience. No one can say what you can take in and what you can't take in. Um, the fractions, it's, it's not the fractions of four parts, but it's actually the parts that are made from that. So we wouldn't take uh, the, the major part. But, it, but even to down to that, it's down to a conscience matter from each and every single one of us. So something that I might have might not be someone that another person has. Um, but the Watchtower permits Jehovah's Witnesses since the 1980s. You used to ban fractions. So in the 1970s, you couldn't have any fractions of blood. But that changed in the 1980s. There was a relaxation. You're now allowed since the 1980s. It's called a conscience matter. But what that means is you are now allowed to have um, those four fractions. And the fraction of red blood cells is basically red blood cells. Red, red blood cells carry oxygen in the blood. If you do very much to it, then you'll destroy the red blood cells, which won't carry blood. So a fraction of red blood cells is basically a bag of red blood cells that's been spun in a centrifuge and separated from the rest of the blood. Um, you, you know, why Why is whole blood transfusions, why are whole blood transfusions banned? But if you split blood into its constitu four constituent parts, you're allowed to, you're, you're allowed to have that. It, it's inconsistent. It's like saying Christians can't eat cake. But you're allowed to eat the four, the five constituent parts of cake, sugar, flour, yeast, water and the other ingredient. You're allowed to have each of those if you have them separately, but you can't put them in a bowl and mix them together and eat it as a cake because cake is banned. But you can have the, the constituent parts of cake separately. Um, I, I don't see that as consistent, you see, sir. Well, I tell you what, let, let me do some, some more research, because like, like I said before, you caught me at light, so I was about to go to bed. Um, okay. But if, if you want to call back another time, I can do some, some research and give you those answers. I mean, were you a witness at one time? Never. No, I used to be an evangelical Christian. I stopped attending in 2010. Okay. And are you interested in, in the Bible, or, or is it...? Well, what do you think? Well, I think you are. Um... In the Bible, is, are you searching or are you searching to disprove? Does that make sense? Well, how would you feel if somebody asked you that question? How would you feel if you knocked on someone's door and they said, 
Oh, I see. Are you here because you're interested in the Bible or are you searching just to disprove my Catholic faith or my, you know, whatever well, a householder's it's, it's, faith is? I'm not being, um, saying it to be contentious to you. I'm really not because, you know, we care for all people, but we're here to help people. But right. um, we're not here to argue with people just for the sake of arguing either. So right. um, we're happy to talk about what we believe in and and what we've got from the Bible, if people are generally interested, but we're, we're not here just to yes. argue. I, I, I believe that the Bible is the word of God. Um, mm. One other thing, that the final thing, Leviticus 17, uh, verses 8 to 10, talks about people who offer the wrong burnt offering or the wrong sacrifice, or who eat blood. And it says in verse 10, I will set my face against that person who eats blood, in verse 8 or verse 9 it's offering the wrong sacrifice and will cut him off from amongst his people so if you offer the wrong sacrifice or you don't offer it at all or you offer it in the wrong place or you eat blood you're to be cut off and then this is repeated in verses 13 to 15 um, the end of verse 14 you shall, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh for the life of all flesh is in its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. Now, verse 15 is going to explain in this context what cut off means. Elsewhere, if you go a few centuries forward in the Bible to, you know, Ezekiel or Jeremiah, you'll find cut off has a different context centuries later in a different part of the Bible. And Likewise, if you go back to Genesis, you know, for things like blasphemy, people are cut off and it has a different meaning centuries previous to this passage in Leviticus 17 but here in Leviticus 17 to be cut off simply means that you are to separate yourself from Israel have a bath that evening a ceremonial bath wash your clothes and then you're clean and you're to come back into the camp so it doesn't mean put to death or executed it doesn't mean a lifetime dis disfellowshipping from Israel because you ate some blood if you break God's commandment on blood you're to wash yourself ceremonially wash your clothes and then you come back into the camp that evening i'll read verse 15 leviticus chapter 17 verse 15 and every person who eats what died naturally or what was torn by beasts whether he is a native of your own country or a stranger he shall both wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening then he shall be clean so they there you have it um if you broke the commandment on blood, you're only to be unclean for a few hours, not even a whole day. But I, it's easy to get your, your elders book, Shepherd the Flock of God. And I've looked at the 2019 edition on blood and section 18.3, subsection three on page 152 says that if a person is not repentant, eating blood they're to be disfellowship so their own family won't talk to them for the rest of their life and even if they are repentant for t for, for, for having a blood trans trans transfusion um they are to have certain privileges removed and obviously the context there would be for a few months or maybe even a year or two the, it seems that your book shepherd the flock of god has totally different regulations on blood to the Bible because in the Bible people weren't disfellowship for the rest of their life for taking blood repentant people who washed in water um, were only expelled from the congregation for a few hours well there's two different things so you made a really good point there about being repentant and so if anyone's disfellowshipped I mean I'm not have you been disfellowshipped I've never or been a Jehovah's Witness okay um, so there's nothing you can do that means you can't come back to the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses if you're repentant. And so it's exactly the same. And the Bible just says there is, you know, it says in Exodus, uh, about, or Leviticus, sorry, about the blood, and it also says in Acts about not taking blood in. Um, but if anyone's repentant for wherever it does, they're always welcome back into the congregation. But they have to have a but, genuine... But, but they're to lose repentance. their privileges. Shepherd the Flock of God, 2019 edition, page 152, says people who are repentant for having a blood transfusion are to lose certain privileges. And they're to lose those privileges. Obviously, the context is not for a few hours. It's for a few months or maybe even a year or a few years. Yeah, because they're, if they're 
I mean, uh, it's interesting that you've got that book because that's not really for, for for people that aren't witnesses. But um, of, of course, you're not going to get anything instantly back again. It takes time to get privileges back in the congregation. It, it's not going to be overnight, but it doesn't mean they'll never get those privileges back again. It's uh, a part of time. So. But is that biblical? Because in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 15, the people who broke blood were only unclean until evening. <laughs> well, it's, if you break any of God's laws, it's not going to be... It's, and, you know, in the Mosaic law, we, we're no longer under the Mosaic law. When Christ died, the Mosaic law ended. We're now under the new covenant. Right, so it's not a sin to have a blood transfusion. There's nothing in the Bible that forbids Christians from eating well, blood no, or, or having a blood transfusion after, because we're not because under the after, Levitical law. Well, no, because no, after um, the, the, we're not under the Mosaic law, um, the, the apostles and the governing body in Jerusalem actually wrote a letter out saying that about um, to abstain from, from, from blood and strangle. So it's in the New Testament and the Old Testament. So it but, still carries over. So the blood law still carries on into the New Testament. But that was 2,000 years ago. The context in Acts 15 is Gentile Christians coming into the congregation and there have been cultural differences between the Gentile Christians and the Jews. And so the Gentile the Christians shouldn't, shouldn't do Doesn't things... If you're Jew or Gentile, it was for everyone not to... I, I'm, a, I'm aware of that. But the reason is they wouldn't eat food like black pudding. All right. In, in, in here in the UK, you can buy black pudding, which is made out of blood. With yeah, we um, wouldn't eat black pudding, no. Pardon? Beg your pardon? We oh. wouldn't take blood into our, our body in any way, whether it's black pudding or transfusion or, or, or any way. So you eat kosher that. food? We're, we're so you're kosher? So are you kosher? We're not under... We're not... Um, Jewish, we're not under the Judaism. We follow what the Bible says. So the Bible just says to abstain things um, from blood. So uh, are you kosher or halal? Do you eat kosher meat or halal meat, or do you just go to Tesco's like everybody else and buy the local meat like from the local else. supermarket? We go to Tesco's like everyone else. Well, then you're then you're you're taking in blood because it hasn't been drained properly. Well. Has most meats have it, it's um, like if you put chicken, I, I cooked a roast chicken tonight. Right. Uh, you know the, the, there are um, and we have lamb and we have everything. So you know the, the, it's it has been drained of blood. Mm. I mean, so so we, we we do do that, but we're not no, we're not under the Judaism place. All right. Well, look, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I much You're appreciate welcome. it. My, my name is Robert, Robert Skinner. If you've got my number, do you want me to give you my number? Yeah, let me take it. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry if I haven't given you all the answers that um, you wanted. But like I said, it, <laughs> you caught me off guard when I was right. um, about to go to bed. Um, right, let me take your number. OK, go for it. It's 07. This is just a brief message from me, Robert Skinner, at the end. I was wondering if there's somebody out there who could help me. I am finding this work uh, of, of making these videos all on my own really too, too difficult for me and too stressful. And I do need to stop. Besides which, at, at over 1,300 videos, I reckon I probably covered about between two thirds and three quarters, at least two thirds to three quarters of all of the Kingdom Halls here in the UK. So there isn't really much need for me to do more videos here in the UK. Besides which, you don't get to um, see the work I do before I speak to these Jehovah's Witnesses, and that is that I phone up endless Kingdom Halls and I'm told over and over again, oh, yes, we know you. You're Robert Skinner. Not speaking to you. Goodbye. Phone goes down. So really what I'm saying is my work here in the UK is, is coming to an end. 
I don't wish to stop this work of evangelizing Jehovah's Witnesses, but it's it's too stressful here on my own in the UK, where almost every congregation now seems to be warned against me. What I would love to do, if somebody could help, is to assist somebody outside of the UK who evangelizes Jehovah's Witnesses on Zoom or WebEx. Um, all you have to do is go to jw.org, go to find a meeting, and then you will find congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses with the telephone numbers in your country, which I hope will be either New Zealand, Australia, Canada, or the USA. Phone up that number, arrange a meeting. Remember, I'm on British time. So please don't arrange a meeting at sort of three o'clock in the morning, my time, or four o'clock in the morning, my time. I don't mind staying up late, but four o'clock in the morning is too difficult. So arrange a meeting with a Jehovah's Witness, say we'll, we'll meet on Zoom, and can I invite a friend to come along? And I'd love to take part, but assisting somebody else. Um, I think that's what I can offer from now on. I, I'd like to be there as somebody who just helps other people to evangelize and I'm the number two person um, I, I'm there more in the background and let somebody else go into the foreground so if anyone's interested um, get back to me um, you can find my email address uh, in the about section of Christian Comedy Channel 2 but it's the badge at um, Yahoo Badge 2 at yahoo.co.uk. Couldn't even say it properly. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much.